Hello guys, this is me Dr. JK and today we will discuss about orthopentomogram also known as OPG. So before starting the anatomical structures of OPG, let us discuss some of its advantages, disadvantages and indications. First of all advantages, broad anatomical coverage, it will give you know gross picture of the mandible and the maxilla. Low patient radiation dose, you know there will be low patient radiation dose as compared to the full mouth radiography convenience of examination it is convenient because you know, the two structures or you know uh, even the tooth and the uh, bony structure will be in front of you and will be having broad you know broader image gross gross image of these structures so there will be convenience of examination used in a patient's unable to m open mouth that is you know if the patient is having trismus or they are having you know the masticatory spaces infections they are unable to open their mouths so there we will you know do orthopentomogram this is the uh, one of the advantages of the orthopentomogram then disadvantages does not show fine anatomical details for fine anatomical details we will need periapical x-ray or bite wing x-ray and there may be problem of magnification and there can be distortion if we compare both sides of the image uh, so there can be you know one side may look like smaller than that of the other so there can be some distortions and there can be some overlapping of the teeth as well as the anatomic structures it may be a bit expensive not too much but a bit expensive okay now we'll discuss about indications uh, we can evaluate trauma the bony trauma uh, involving the mandible and the maxilla and the dental alveolar trauma we can evaluate third molars we can you know even evaluate impactions uh, to be mesoangular vertical horizontal and the distoangular okay we can evaluate large lesions to development and developmental anomalies and intolerant to intraoral procedures those patients who cannot you know go for intraoral procedure will uh, you know will need to take the orthopentomogram so here we have the OPG so let me choose a pen here so that I can draw some drawing here so here we can see this is the mandible okay this is maxilla right so first of all we have condyle over here sorry for bad paint painting this is the uh, condyler process of mandible this is the coronoid process right and this is the sigmoid notch okay this is the inferior border of the mandible you know when there is a trauma we can see the step at the inferior border of the mandible or we can also see step at the you know occlusion or occlusal level okay this is the uh, inferior alveolar nerve canal it will come up to here and this is the uh, mental foramen that is present at the apex of the you know second premolar right this is the mental foramen okay from here mental nerve will come out okay so this was about the mandible here now we will move toward the maxilla this is the hard palate and here we can see the maxillary sinus this is the medial wall this is the posterior wall and here we can see a space between the posterior wall and the pterygoid plates this is you know the pterygo maxillary fissure it is very important you know when there will be a pathology of the maxillary sinus and it is involving the posterior wall so it will obliterate this structure okay and this is the nasal cavity right here and this is the nasal septum here we can see inferior orbital foramen right and here we can see the orbits here and there okay and this is the uh, articular eminence okay this is the condylar fossa okay this is the zygomatic arch this is zygomatic arch okay here we can see cervical vertebra here these are the cervical vertebra right and this is the process you know the name of this process this is stylite process okay this is the shadow of the tongue it will be on both sides 
okay this is the uh, hide bone shadow of the hide bone okay it is it will be present on the both side okay so yes one more thing is this is the tuberosity area of the maxilla if the last tooth uh, present in the maxilla is second molar then tuberosity will be present posterior to the, uh, la uh, the second molar and if it is the third molar then it will be present posterior to the third molar okay here we can see these are the teeth and you can see it, it look uh, more radio opaque than the normal tooth structure because it, these are the restorations the restorations will look more radio opaque than the normal tooth structure okay here you can see there are many restorations on different teeth even at the lit the mesial uh, side of the lateral incisor on the distal side of the central incisors and here we have um, canine which is having RCT done okay here you can see the obturation it, it is over obturated because the apex end here okay this is over obturation you will you know learn these things in when you will do your clinical uh, practice okay so here okay we, uh, I'm gonna show you something uh, it, it looks like carry carries here in the tooth, tooth structure for you know individualized tooth if you want to see better picture of individual tooth or two teeth you can go for pretty apical x-ray or bite wing x-ray so uh, I can tell you he, it, this is the carious tooth here here you can see there is again a restoration here because of the you know cervical caries so that's it I think I have completed all of the structures here so hopefully you enjoyed this lecture and now you can easily recognize the or describe the orthopentomogram easily in your exams so I will come up with more radiographic you know images and we can describe describe those images as well so till my next lecture take care and bye bye